Welcome to Invest. We talk about investing, finance, and professional development. Uh, so, according time of 5:35 p.m. on the Eastern Time, Ethereum contract three thousand five hundred ten dollars, up about one point eight eight percent so far. With respect to over crypto market, you see clearly we are relatively still flat. Um, not really up or down a lot. But there are some specific coins like Dogecoin and Shiba Inu specifically that are up a little bit more because of the bullish pennant that it has formed, which we'll dive into again. If you look at my previous video, we talked about this. And uh, it's like a classic technical formation that allow for a reach up. But in terms of the limitations of the reach uh, or the surge, if you may, we will dive into a little bit more um, If in case you missed the last video. And respect to Ethereum right now, we are in between levels again. Um, you know, the level that, you know, that's the closest in proximity would be the 3,472 versus the next level of 3,650, which is the, the next technical level that we need to get up to, right? And uh, relatively speaking, this seems like this is a bearish pendant compared to the bullish pendant that you know with respect to dogecoin is currently forming you could see that with respect to the you know large separation which is technically formed like a triangle as you can see that as it leaps up with the large separation between you know technically the the bottom you know on this purple dot to the top of this uh you know this uh, purple line or pink line depending on what color scheme you want to choose uh, you can see that as we get tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter, it, it's, you know, subsequently surge up. This is like the classic uh, bullish pattern. But on relatively perspective, you put that in just position in comparison, you see that uh, with respect to Ethereum, it's doing the opposite, right? You can see that we squeeze tighter, tighter and tighter, and that's also we have a large separation. Um, so this is, uh, you know, it seems like it's the opposite side of the spectrum in terms of the technical pattern that is illustrating especially on the fact that MACD is already have a, you know, relatively lost separation. At the same time, RSI is still relatively overbought at 72 out of 70. Um, so using your spidey sense, again, in my channel, and I am telling you guys consistently that I'm never in position to make predictions because no one has that, you know, um, that capability unless you're a wizard and you could predict the future and at the same time you have full clarity and visibility into the media affectation on you know if that news is even like new news per se right remember most of the news that you get is most of the time curated by you know a whale investor and the news that you get is uh, has been pre-marinated and pre basically pre-selected to influence the market, right? So it's relatively stale news, despite it's called news. But we, as uh, investors on a retail fund, especially, we don't, we're not hedge fund, which have, you know, some political power that can get information before it comes out. Um, so that put us in a disadvantage perspective, right? So how can we identify the gaps? Is to do our fundamental research on identify the true value versus the technical level, which is you know where we look at the chart in front of us and the risk level that we see right now again just to remind us 72 out of 70 so it's very overbought we've been dragging up ever since the golden cross we formed when we were at the 2600 and we've been leaking leaping up for quite some time now in terms of the macro affectation front we're still you know pending on the russian russian ukraine war we're still pending on potential recession tory pressure we're still pending on the interest sites and the COVID is still kind of lingering on a sideways fashion. We don't know. But there are cases that are spiking, you know, in the U.S. And obviously with respect to China, that's been a lockdown recently, driving some volatility, right? So, but with respect to these affectations, are these completely solved, right? Have we reached a resolution, right? And have we searched up too fast, too quick? Uh, I'm not in a position to make that decision for you, but that's something you want to think about. Right. With respect to Bitcoin, we're at the 46,750. We are, again, right, uh, lingering around. Um, we are about to, uh, we're still relatively overbought at 72 out of 70. So overbought, um, or 63, it was a delay. 63 out of 70, we have been leaping for quite some time now. But you can see that it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter on the MACD front. Mm -hmm. So we are losing steam, and you can see that we have been losing steam for quite some time, ever since you know try to hit forty eight thousand for one, two, three, four, five, 
six times and we got cancelled out every single time we reached there for the right reason because it's overbought around those levels um, on an RSI scale relatively so coming back down to 44 all the way to 42 would be very logical respect to Ethereum Classic right now we form a death cross right because of the overall market still leaping up we are still sustaining but you, you can tell that we've been extremely overbought for quite some time we're still overbought and uh, dev cross is is happening and you can see that we have surge up for quite too fast too strong so leap down will be very logical from here right all the way from 30 38 next level 34 to 27 which are not a small amount of in percentage you know if you're buying now so the risk is absolutely not in your favor for ethereum classic at the moment right again the setup not predictions right so dogecoin again this is a bullish pendant right you can see that if you draw a triangle right and maybe i could just like draw it for us so you guys understand and know what i'm talking about um you can see that there's one right here this is the top of the triangle and then you could see there's another one Okay, you could see that it's like a downward triangle, right? And you could see that as we squeeze tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter, you form like zigzag and then you propel up, right? So it's a classic bullish pattern that, you know, both Dogecoin and you could see that Shiba Inu is also forming as well. And maybe I could just draw it for us as well, like since I want to be thoughtful and uh, hopefully this is not wasting too much of your time watching. Um, but you can see that, right? Um, let me just like fix this up a little bit to make sure that we're tight, right? You can see that we squeeze and then get tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and that's pump up, right? So, but can how much can we surge up, right? Let's go back to Dogecoin again. You know, um, with respect to the current level of 1466, the next technical level will be like somewhere around 15. And then you have a bunch of monumental levels that you have to kind of cross up, right? You can see that um, when we were there, it was quite difficult to get over, right? So I think 15 will be a good logical to take some profit from there, knowing the fact that we're relatively overbought already. Cardano is up about 2.5% uh, with respect to current level. It's not the best, right? With the 67 out of 70, we're about to cross down. We've been getting tighter and tighter on the MACD front. So 85 to 74 it would be where I would DCA. I'm not saying we'll get there, but would I be buying now? Again, the setup is not good, right? Again, I don't make predictions. I'm making um, a assessment on the current risk profile of the trade setup that we have right now, right? In respect to Solana, um, 136, right? Still lingering on the, around the level. And uh, the bull the momentum is kind of flattening out. You could see that, right? Um, and you, you see a delay on the MACD front. And we are basically getting blockade from the 142, which makes sense because that's the resistance level we've had prior in the past. And I would say time frame was around like January 2022, so early in the year. Uh, so we kind of try to go back up. Um, so is this a good level to buy in right now? I mean, you know how much we surge with the 80 out of 70. So um, I... Personally, would not because not the best risk profile for me to get in, right? XRP 84 right now. Uh, again, I like the, the better setup for me to get in will be 63 to 57. I'm not saying we'll get there, but you could s clearly see that we're very over overbought right now. Um, so definitely be cautious. Polkadot's uh, flat as well um, with a 67 out of 70. Um, so I prefer anywhere from 16 all the way to below from there. Algorand's not doing anything. It's flat at the moment. Uh, 75 to 67. Uh, Shiba Inu, um, you can see again, right? It's the bullish pendant that you form. Uh, that's why it's squeezing. So would I be, where would I be starting looking at profit, right? We try to get to a level, you could see somewhere some blockade here at the 2712. But uh, I think that's about it. We could technically get to the 2872, um, but you will see that's a bunch of blockades on top. Right, and you can see a bunch of blockades here as well. So, and that makes sense because we're at the 60 out of 70 right now, right? So, not a big leap up going forward in the near term. Uh, MacTech 174, I mean, up 1.75 percent. What am I saying? We're at the 57 out of 70, so um, it is showing a W shape. So, we could technically keep surging to above 175. And we could potentially get to the 188 and then kind of give back up and some sell back down. But the but the momentum is still strong on poly, uh, Polygon at the moment. AVAX at $98 right now. Um, you could see that 
we are still surging, so bullish still, uh, but it's kind of flat-ish, curved up, 66 out of 70. Um, and with respect to current level, uh, 62.50 from here. Um, Luna, 112. Um, you can see that we gave up at 118 because we tried to get to the next flat level, 120 again, right? This makes sense. You know why, right? Because this is another bullish pendant if you look into it, right? Uh, I'm going to draw it again just for us. Uh, one, right? And then another one, right? You could see it, right? So this is like you get tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and then you squeeze up, right? But you could tell that the squeeze up was not a strong one because of the fact that we were squeezing from where? 68 out of 70, right? So that's a pretty overbought level already. Uh, and we needed to squeeze up because of the golden cross we formed recently, right? So this is just technical speaking the truth. Um, again, is this a good setup to be buying right now? I would say no, because um, it has already crossed and at the same time we need a death crossed and we have a reverse w shape right now it's like an m right so when you see that it means that we hit the resistance twice so it's giving up now uh, and the bullish momentum is already simmering uh, so selling back down would be very logical again right 62 52 to 45 would be where we dca at right so hope you guys had a good sunday and um just a trivial thing i was uh, i spent about like 20 minutes in my living room trying to find my apple tv remote and uh man it's it was such i had to like flip over a couch i have to like go through the pillows and all that stuff like going through you know we had like this comforter and which is like ugh, it's just like such a pain in the ass trying to find a remote control for my apple tv and um uh, but i'm happy that I, I found it eventually it was like in between two pillows and it was stuck in between really deep into the couch and I was like, wow, that was like the biggest waste of my 25 minutes of my life ever. I'll try to find a remote. Um, yeah, and uh, by the way, like, is there any like remedy or like a, like a solution if you, let's say you lose your Apple TV controller, but you could still use your phone to like control it. Right, I know you could do that, but you need to like hook it up with your Apple TV controller first and then you synchronize that with your, your phone, then you could do so, right? But what if you just lost your, your Apple TV controller and you just have your phone, but you never synchronize your phone to the Apple TV? How does that work? Like, if, if you know, like, let me know, if, you know, on the comment section below. Um, I, I try to, like, find this. It seems like it's like an urban myth. <laughs> but uh, anyways, appreciate you. Have a good one. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care. Bye.